Hello everybody, welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name is Mark, and today we're turning our attentions back to VR and to the Pimax Crystal Light. They've just introduced a new upscaling mode that promises a performance boost. It's currently under beta, under test, but it's out in the wild. And in this video, we're going to put it to the test. And we're going to compare it not only to the headset at full resolution, but to DLSS as well in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For any of you new to VR or not sure exactly how it works, here is a quick and simplified explanation. For you techies out there, now's the time to take that blue pill. To create an image requires some fairly complex computing by both your GPU and CPU. That image, let's call it the raw render if you like, is usually considerably larger than what you see in the headset. Typical of somebody using Fresnel or spheric lenses, compared to pancake lenses and so on. In a nutshell, our raw render has to be of the certain size so that it'll fit the lens and allow for the curvature of the lens, for example, and barrel distortion and so on. The higher the resolution, the longer it takes to compute and create that image. What upscaling does is very similar to what DLSS does in that it creates an image of a lower resolution initially. Therefore, it can create it faster then uses a combination of hardware and software to upscale the image and the resolution. The result is it can create frames faster, so you get a much smoother performance. There's no gain with no pain, as they say, and the potential downside is that the upscaled image is not quite as crisp and as clear as the native full resolution image. The new version of Pimax Play does take a little while to install and includes a firmware update. And all my tests were done at 90 Hz. And within the Pimax Play software under device, you can enable the upscale mode, as shown here. My render quality was set to high. To apply maximum stress on the system, fixed foveated rendering was off. And as I have the local dimming version, that was set to balanced. My particular settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator are not really relevant. What's relevant is the difference in the FPS and overall performance. I have a 14900K and a 4090, so the settings were to put maximum stress on the system to achieve at least a 30fps under TAA, native resolution. The logic being that if we can get an improvement in performance and a noticeable one at these sort of settings, then this bodes well for those on medium to lower end systems, and the chances are that you'll see a bigger escalation in terms of performance than what I am able to reflect here. Let's get on with the test. For the location, I've chosen Tokyo in Japan, one of the highest density sceneries, and we'll be in Gottfried's amazing Mini 500 helicopter, one of my favorites. All the tests were done in DX11, as this provides a marginally better performance in my experience to DX12. For all tests, I'm using Pimax XR, the OpenXR runtime for the Pimax VR headsets, the VR mirror, and I'm also recording, please note. The tower in front of us is the Tokyo Skytree. I selected that as the tower itself includes a lot of detail, various different elements. I found it one of the easier ways to compare one visual with the next. It helps determine the clarity of the detail. And the Tokyo skyline in the distance gives me an opportunity to do likewise for things that are not close to the aircraft. Got friends, Mini 500 helicopter has a combination of both large and small dials with a variety of different labels in different fonts and sizes. It'll be no surprise to anybody that the 2880 by 2880 full resolution on the Pimax Crystal Light provided the best detail and the best clarity overall. Every time I jump into this headset, well, my jaw drops. But of course, at full resolution, the CPU and GPU are very, very busy, and that has an impact on performance. Although overall, my Microsoft Flight Simulator settings run realistically high, for reasons I've already mentioned. As you can see here, both DLSS and the upscaling from Pimax provided a substantial uplift in terms of overall performance and the smoothness of the flight was maintained. The LSS provided a 44% uplift in FPS, whilst the Pimax upscale provided a 56% uplift overall on average. This then boils down to what's the difference between the Pimax upscale and DLSS in Microsoft Flight 
simulator. Well, the Pimax upscale facility from a performance point of view wins hands down, providing on average about a 9% uplift on DLSS. And 9% in VR terms, well that's substantial. Within the cockpit and looking at the gauges, there wasn't a lot in it between the two, with perhaps DLSS having a slight edge in terms of clarity overall. Using the upscale facility did induce more shimmering within the scenery at middle to far distance. So one would need to probably experiment with FSR sharpening or something of that nature in order to reduce that. The shimmer was far more evident in the upscale image as opposed to DLSS. And overall, a marginal and slight loss in terms of visual fidelity. But as mentioned, more experimentation is required to get the Pimax upscale to optimum. But I think the primary takeaway here is that the upscale utility does exactly what it says on the tin, providing in my tests over a 50% increase in performance, without having to downscale your resolution to a point where you're not getting the benefit of the amazing graphics within the Pimax Crystal Light, and significantly for those on lower to middle systems, running flight simulation or other applications, there's a practical and viable option to improve performance and get the best out of your headset. If you're running a game or simulation that doesn't offer DLSS and you're not running a top-end system, well, the Pimax upscale utility, well, it's an absolute must. Note the FPS figures indicated above have been rounded up and are estimated. You should regard the results as indicative as results will vary from machine to machine subject to its specification. One thing worth noting was the upscaled image was coming from a 2160 by 2160 render, which is exactly the same as the HP Reverb G2. This should mean if you're able to run the Reverb G2 at a reasonable frame rate, expectations for the Pimax Crystal Light should be much the same. Using the upscale mode, whilst gaining the benefit of a larger sweet spot, larger FOV, but sticking with a PC VR headset. If you're thinking of ordering, there's a link below that will give you a nominal discount. Details and promo code in the notes below this video. Please note this link is not affiliated, but the option is there if you want it. Pimax are continuing to work on the upscale mode, as mentioned earlier, and bear in mind it's still a beta, a work in progress, so hopefully improvements can be expected in the near future. And this functionality, I believe, will be coming to the Pimax Crystal. And it's great to see Pimax supporting their VR headsets with such useful utilities. Well, as always, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon, and ciao for now.